My name is uh, Liam Wilby. I'm a series developer at BBC Storyworks. Uh, and I led the development of the Food for Thought series, um, which we produced uh, in collaboration with Food Drink Europe and which we launched in April of this year. Hopefully that's not news to everyone. Hopefully some of you will have seen some of that. If you have, great. If you haven't, please do go and see it. There are some lovely postcards going around that have a QR code on the back. You can scan the QR code, takes you straight to bbc.com and you can see the footage on there. So you have absolutely no excuse to go and watch it. I'd like to thank uh, Will for his work on helping to develop the series, uh, but also for inviting the BBC Storyworks team here today. So I have with me Max Fry, who's over here, who was the series lead, who led the whole of the series. Uh, we've got Hannah O'Neill and Claire Small, give us a wave, Hannah, uh, who led the creative for the series. And we also have Molly Stokes, who led the marketing distribution, give us a wave, Molly. So if you're interested in anything to do with the series, come and chat to us at any point. I'd also like to thank Will for allowing me today to come and talk about a survey that we ran recently with uh, a select group of BBC.com's global audience. Audience insights are really an essential part of everything that we do at BBC Storyworks. So at Storyworks, we're responsible for producing really in-depth, comprehensive series on some of the most important topics across the globe. And we're driven by the BBC's mission to inform, entertain and educate. In order to do that, in order to inform, educate, and entertain BBC.com's audiences, we have to produce stories about things that they value. To understand what they value, we have to understand, we have to understand our audiences, which is why we, we do so much with audience insights. The surveys that we run are just a small slice of that, but they're a really important slice, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So just to begin, so our, our, our survey was with, a, with our global audience, so it's a BBC.com, so we really, um, we, we talked to people uh, everywhere across the globe. And what we do is we use all of this data, all of these insights to inform both the what of the stories we produce, but also the how of the stories we produce. For Food for Thought, it was really important and led us to tell stories with some, some really big players. Nestle, for example, featuring the wonderful Handsome Robin at the front and some of his farmers. Uh, we also told some amazing stories with some SMEs such as the Rolet Group and also Good Good, um, companies like that. What I'm going to talk about today is a few different things. I'm going to talk a little bit about Net Zero as well as we're at the Net Zero tent. But I'm also going to talk about our audience's perceptions of the food and drink industry in regards to their, to their sustainability messaging. For example, we found that just 15% of audiences in Europe, 15% believed to any degree the sustainability messaging of the food and drink industry. So what we have there is a storytelling issue. If you're putting out messaging and only 15% of people are agreeing, we, ha we have an issue there. So that's something that I'll, that I'll be talking about. But we have three kind of key headlines that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna mention today. Uh, so the first of which is very simply, audiences are concerned and they're taking action. Second, related to that, a stat that I just said, uh, audiences do not trust food and drink brands and also many other industries' sustainability claims. The third headline conclusion that we can take from the survey is that what is required and what is demanded is honest and transparent storytelling. So I'm gonna talk about those kind of one after the other. So first, the concerned and, and taking action. We found that 67% of the people that we, uh, that we surveyed felt that they knew what actions they personally could take in order to lower their own impact on climate change. The vast majority said they had taken at least one action to reduce their own impact on climate change. And in relation to food and drink, 48%, so almost one in two, said that they had reduced uh, their meat and dairy intake in order to reduce their own impact on climate change. So almost one in two, it's a really huge, huge stat, one of the, one of the most notable from the survey that we ran. But of course, this is not an individual problem. This is a systemic problem. And there's only so much that individuals can do. And so it's really important that we, that we think beyond that and think to, to, to businesses and governments. And here's where we start to get to a real concern. So uh, across the globe, not just in Europe, only 9% of people are confident that we'll reach the Paris Agreement goal of limiting temperatures to 1.5 degrees of warming. Just 9%. So there is a real belief in this stat and across the survey, across all the data, that businesses and governments are not doing enough. Which takes me to the next headline. The next headline is that question of trust. And again, that stat that just 15% of our audiences trust the sustainability messaging coming from the food and drink industry. Correlated with that is a lack of comprehension. So just 22% 
of People Survey think that they find it easy to understand the sustainability credentials of the food and drink brands that they are purchasing. So 15% believe, 22% think that they have some idea of the sustainability, but there's a huge, huge gap here. And again, the huge gap is, is in storytelling and is messaging. There's a real disconnect in the sense that respondents want change, they want to learn about change, but they're reluctant to listen. As storytellers at the BBC, that's really important for us. And we ask ourselves, what can we do? And the question is very simply to talk about it, but talk about it in the right way. The way to do that is honest and transparent storytelling, which is the, the third thing that we can take from the survey. It's really important. So everyone's aware of the concept of greenwashing. Greenwashing is something that's coming up again and again. It seems like almost daily at the moment, the ASA are coming out with uh, new rules on different organizations accusing them of greenwashing. What that can do is, when organizations see that, is they shift towards another kind of greenwashing, which is green hushing. Green hushing, which I'm sure many of you are also aware of, is where an organization stops talking about the sustainability credentials. In so doing, they avoid risk, but they also excuse themselves from responsibility. We learned from the survey, this as well is not acceptable. 92% of our audiences expect transparency from organizations about their carbon emissions. And 88% think that organizations should have clear and defined pathways for reducing their own emissions. So again, a vast, vast majority expect organizations to be talking about it. So if we can extrapolate from this, on the one hand, we have uh, you know, this lack of trust. On the other hand, we have concern and a demand for action and communication what is required always is clear and honest storytelling. In Food for Thought, in the series that I do hope you go and watch, we have that transparency, which features human-centered storytelling about the journeys that organizations are going on. We know that they're resonating with audiences. We have our initial results from the launch. Speak to Molly if you want to hear about any of the initial results. She's the, she's the person with the figures. We know that the films are, are resonating. The, uh, the, the follow-through rate of the films is extremely high, which means when people come to watch the films, they watch the film to the end, which means that they're really engaging. We've seen again and again and again at BBC Storyworks on other series that the stories that are transparent and that are honest are the ones that always resonate. The best films are always the ones that say, here's some work that we're doing. We know that it's not enough. We know that we're part of the problem and we have a journey to go on. And it's always those films that are the most successful. They're also the most brave. It can be difficult to talk about the limitations, but when it comes to the climate emergency, that kind of bravery is needed both in action, but also in communication. And as we've kind of learned from the survey, if you don't have that honest storytelling, people aren't gonna believe you anyway. So um, it's a real kind of requirement for us whenever we do any series, but particularly thinking about the food and drink industry again. Just to conclude, conclude the way that we use this data and all of the audience data that we collect across lots of different fancy tools that we have, is we take that data, we learn what our audiences value, and then we feed that back into the development of other series that we produce. Again, it's really essential, both for the what, but also the how that we tell our stories. So thinking about what we might do again, looking beyond to another series, potentially with Food Drink Europe, and also across many other topics and sectors that we look at, we're always, always being data-led and always thinking about what our audiences value and what is important to them. So I urge you to, to go and watch the series, to scan the QR code. Also on the back of those nifty little posters, there is an email. You can email, it goes through to me. Uh, anything that you think about the survey, any questions that you have, any interests. Also, if you have an amazing story, uh, we've already listened to, to Robin, and forgive me, I've forgotten your name, but the one, sorry? Emery. And Emmerich about the wonderful work that you're doing. Any story like that, we'd love to hear. We're always collecting them. We're always interested to hear about the work that we're doing. So thank you very much. Go watch the series. Uh, thank you.